Alrighty guys, today we're starting things out with a project you probably aren't expecting me to be working on anymore. The mini truck, the Toyota Tacoma. Now, I bought this truck a few months ago. I planned on building it. I'm still sort of kind of on the fence. I guess it's kind of listed for sale, but at the same time, it's also kind of not because I'm actually shipping this truck uh, a very, very long distance away from the house here in Utah. And you guys will actually see it again at some point in the future, probably the near future, to be honest. Um, but before I put it on the transporter and before I ship it out of here, there's one thing that I want to take care of because it has bugged me ever since I bought this truck. And now, you know, dragging my feet, I'm finally getting around to fixing it. Now that problem has to do with the ride height of the truck. Like up front, I mean, the whole truck is lowered. I don't know how much, but um, I love the stance up front, but up back, it's like an inch and three quarters lower than it is on the front side. And to me, that just doesn't look right. I like up there how you have just a small gap between the tire and the fender, where back here, the fender actually goes over the tire. That's no bueno. Um, so we are gonna take care of that. We have two options, either lower the front further or raise the back up. And the latter is the option that we're gonna choose. Now, luckily it's a pretty easy fix um, all I'm going to do is take the uh, lowering blocks out. They're just a simple fabricated steel lowering block. And I'm just going to chop an inch and three quarters, two inches out of them to raise the back end up. It'll correct our ride height. It'll give us a little more travel because yeah, this thing does bottom out, believe it or not. Um, and that'll also make it a little bit easier for getting it on the transport truck and then driving it around in the place where we're going to be driving it when it gets there. So uh, without further ado, let's get to work. So this right here is about the look that I'm going for. So it'll be about an inch and three quarter higher than it was before. I like it. So we got ourselves a five inch lowering block. We're gonna chop it in the middle and lower it to be about three and a quarter. So um, the goal is to take an inch and three quarters out of this. It's just basic, uh, you know, rectangle steel. So pretty simple operation. Luckily, these U-bolts have got plenty of thread, so this is pretty much a no-cost job. So 
So because the U-bolts are now a lot longer, um, my socket is bottomed out, so I'm just gonna snip the bottoms of the U-bolts, and then we tighten it the rest of the way. So before you ask the obvious question of why didn't I just buy some replacement drop blocks, well, yeah, that would probably have been a little bit better idea. But uh, this way it cost me literally zero dollars other than, I guess, if you consider the consumables of the welding wire, the spray paint, and the uh, welding gas. But basically it's a free mod rather than spending 50, 60 bucks for another pair of drop blocks. Um, and this way, if you remember, the truck leaned a little bit to one side before. I was actually able to correct that by changing one block about 3 sixteenths of an inch different from the other one. So now when I measure front to back, side to side, all four corners of this truck are basically level. And I'll put some shots up on the screen with the truck outside so you can get a good before and after comparison. But uh, the stance right now is perfect and it kind of makes me fall in love with this truck just a little bit more. So, um, I don't know, it seems like anytime I work on a vehicle, like it could be just washing it, I kind of get reattached to it. So, um, yeah, we'll take it for a very quick drive. I probably won't show you guys that just to make sure everything is kosher. Um, they are an angled drop block just because you've got to, you know, point the pinion of the differential towards the drive shaft. Right now, in terms of the setup on the truck, it's dropped about three inches from stock out back and on the front. I'm still unsure of the specifics, but if I had to guess, probably two inches lower than stock up front, three out back. And if you're curious on the wheels and tires, those are like late 90s Mustang 17 inch wheels with a 215, 45, 17 all the way around. So um, yeah, definitely digging the stance of this thing now before I kind of hated how low it was in the back end. But uh, to me, this is just about perfect. So anyway, um, yeah, now it's time to say goodbye to the truck. It's gonna get loaded up on the trailer in the morning. It's like five at night. Um, they're coming between 9.30 and 10 in the morning. So we got this done just in time. Um, and yeah, remember, you guys will be seeing this truck before you know it. Now, I gotta be straight with you guys. I really am having mixed feelings about what to do with this Tacoma in the long run. Like, I still wanna build it. Half of me is like, well, I could put a 2J in it. I could put, I could turbocharge the motor that's in it. I could put an aluminum LS in there. I could figure out something cool to do with that truck. And part of the reason why it's so appealing to me and why it's gonna be so hard to let go is because of the weight of the truck. Like, this guy right here is about 4,800 pounds. The ugly truck's about 5,200 pounds. Um, the Tacoma, that thing weighs 2,600 pounds without me in it. Of course, you know, you can do the math there, but um, yeah, a 2,600 pound rear wheel drive manual transmission vehicle. Um, there's not a lot of vehicles on the road that are that lightweight. I mean, like, I don't know what a Miata weighs, but it might be a little bit less. Um, you know, most little cars nowadays, like an STI or a Camaro or a Mustang, they weigh, you know, mid 3,000 pounds, probably closer to 4,000 pounds in some cases. Um, so if you want to go fast, a lightweight vehicle is the easiest thing to build. And of course, it's so hard to let that little Tacoma go because 2,600 pounds. Um, I'm actually shipping it to myself, and I'll show you guys that in a future video. But for now, um, we're going to put a pin in that, and we're going to talk about the Copo truck. Now, last time you guys saw this thing, we had just about wrapped up the 4L60 to 4L80 swap. And if you remember, this is an all-wheel drive, full-time vehicle. Um, the last thing you guys knew, we were waiting on drive shafts. Um, we actually got them back from the shop. They were both modified in length and balanced. 
Uh, since then, I've put them in the truck and I actually have taken it on a very short test drive just to kind of make sure it actually shifts through the gears and that the electronics are working and the wiring changes and, you know, basically a just overall function confirmation. But I haven't really ripped the truck at all. I haven't gone wide open throttle and I probably won't for a little while because of course, you know, get a brand new transmission, you kind of sort of want to do like a little bit of a break-in procedure on it. Uh, but we are going to go for a test drive today and I will kind of give you guys my impressions of the 4L60 to 4L80 swap because there are a lot of differences. I mean, it has a different gear ratio. First gear in a 4L80 is like 248 to 1, where first gear in the 4L60 is like 308 or something like that. So the 4L60 has a mechanical advantage in first gear and second gear as well. And the 4L60 has a better overdrive ratio, meaning we'll have a lower RPM at highway cruising speed. So um, from a gearing standpoint, yeah, the 4L80 does have a bit of a disadvantage, but it also has an advantage in the sense that it has a tighter gear spread. So whenever you shift from first to second to second to third, the RPMs will drop less than they will with the 4L60. Um, I do have a much better converter in this one than I did in the 4L60. It's got a Circle D 3400 stall, triple disc lockup, and I will comment on that. Um, I am going to have to play with the shift settings on the converter clutch because where I had it initially with a minimum 90% duty cycle, uh, yeah, when that converter clutch locks up, like, there's no question about it. It locks and it lets you know it. So I have softened up the minimum duty cycle just a little bit. Um, and I am data logging the torque converter as part of all my other stuff, just to make sure that we don't introduce any slip. But with a triple disc, there is pretty much zero chance this thing is going to slip. The whole reason why I went with a triple disc is because, you know, say at the top of the quarter mile, um, if we want to get a little bit more mile per hour, if we have enough horsepower, we can lock that converter clutch and it sort of will act like another gear because, you know, under wide open throttle, you'll probably have a couple hundred RPM of converter slip. So you lock the clutch and it's kind of like another gear, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, all that aside, the transmission swap so far has gone pretty straightforward. I, I mean, the first test drive re revealed everything's functioning like it should, no major problems. Um, so yeah, let's hit the road and let's go for a drive. All right, guys, my first impression of the 4L80. One, two shifts, pretty decent. Three shift decent and the converter clutch here it comes still a little bit on the firm side but it definitely is a little bit more bearable or comfortable than it was last time um, one thing that is weird which I can't figure out whenever you let off the gas like say we're cruising along here 50 miles an hour let off the gas the converter unlocks get back in it and I can watch on the graph it locks right back up again um, I don't know if there's a way I can tune that out because if it were me, like if you're just cruising down the road, you might as well leave that converter lock the whole time. Um, but I haven't seen a parameter that lets let you know lets you change that. Uh, otherwise, though, with the gearing in this truck, we do have 430s. We have a uh, 30 and a half inch tall tire in terms of RPMs. It's going to be a little bit higher now than it was with the 4L60. So 55 miles an hour. Um, just under 2,000 RPM. I think we'll step it up to 65, which is of course the speed limit where we are at 65 miles an hour. And about 2,200 RPM. So let's say we want to go 70, cruise down the freeway. 70 is about 2,500. So uh, yeah, the 430s definitely take away from like the highway friendliness of this setup, but uh, they definitely help taking off from a dead stop. So, oh, that one was nice. The converter just locked there and I hardly even noticed it. So um, I'm gonna play with that table just a little bit, you know, to make it shift softer under lower line pressure settings, you know, just cruising speeds, but I still want it to shift fairly firmly when we're on the throttle, especially when we get into a, a scenario where we're doing a wide open throttle converter lock. You know, of course we want it to happen pretty quick then. All right, do one more just for fun. And once again, I'm not going full throttle here. This would be maybe half, quarter throttle. Shift's amazing. 
Wait for the converter. A little on the firm side yet, but we'll fix that. Now the other thing that's kind of perplexing me is I have the option checked to keep the converter locked when a gear change happens, so from three to four. But the weird thing I've noticed is every single time it does a three, four shift, um, it keeps the converter locked during the shift, but right after the shift for a split second, it unlocks, then it locks back up again, which I can't explain. I don't know. It's probably just a weird back-end programming thing because there's no option that I've seen that talks about unlock after a shift. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I'll talk to Matt. He can be squared away. thing I wanted to touch on today, uh, trans fluid temps. Of course, you know, you want the fluid temps to be as cool as possible. In my ugly truck, same exact trans, same exact converter, sort of. Um, on the hottest day, that thing will be 150, 140 degrees. This one, just under steady driving right now, it's already 150 and stop and go traffic the other day, I noticed. It's up like 180 or so. Two differences, three differences maybe. Um, the one big difference is the trans cooler is on this truck, kind of hidden behind my heat exchanger for the supercharger. So airflow is probably a little bit obstructed compared to how it is in the ugly truck where I do have an intercooler in front of it, but it's spaced further ahead and there's more room for air to kind of get through it. So um, there's that. This one still has the radiator transmission cooler in the loop. The ugly truck does not. And this one also has metal trans cooler lines that are sort of close to the headers. I kept them as far away as I possibly could, but uh, I think in the future to try to keep the trans temps down, what I'm gonna do, uh, switch to a AN style braided line. That way I can route them far away from the headers. I'm gonna take the radiator out of the loop so it just goes straight from the trans to the true cool 40K. And then I think I'm gonna redo my supercharger heat exchanger, maybe do a thinner one that's like taller. That way it'll let more airflow pass through and get to the trans cooler. So a few major, or minor changes rather. Um, and it hasn't gotten hot to the point where I'm concerned about it. It's just gotten like a little warmer than I would like. see in that run I stayed in the throttle just a little bit longer um, and when the converter locked up that time like it felt just about right because we had a little bit more power in it uh, so I, I'm excited to get this thing back to the track um, and to see exactly how well that triple disc works because I feel like for the weight of the truck the amount of power we're making I feel like it might give us a little bit more mile an hour uh, maybe not but if it doesn't all we have to do is leave it unlocked but I do know that eventually when we get a lot more horsepower, it definitely will help. Uh, a lot of you guys have also asked about zero to 60 times and 60 foot and stuff like that. And said, well, is it gonna be worse uh, because of the gearing we talked about? Maybe, but we will test that. My hope is that by having switched to the better Circle D converter, that'll probably offset some of that loss that we might have. Uh, based on the gearing. So I think and I hope that my 0 to 60 my 60 foot remain unchanged Possibly with because we do have the better converter. It might be a little faster So I think that's gonna bring this video to an end. I want to say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you um, We got some more good stuff coming up. I have the motor build that's kind of in the background we got some new cool parts for the AT4 we're going to be installing. Uh, we're going on a trip soon. You'll see that. What else? Oh, the ugly truck. Yeah, I'm going to do a few tweaks on that. Hopefully, the EFI stuff that we have in the works will be here soon. Um, I do not want to blow the 8.1 up, but I do want to lean on it a little bit harder than we ever have before. And we'll give it some help with, like, the 85 and stuff like that. So, all that and more next time on... 
my channel. Thank you. Ooh, Impala SS. Nice. You do not see those anymore. 